This video is on the HP 23-Q055NA on how to remove the uh, stand and the back so you can access the internals. Uh, so the first thing you need to do uh, the, around the back of the machine is just stand it up, pull the screen right into the uh, stand as you can see there. Now I have actually just pulled the clip up slightly just so you can see what you need to remove but the top plastic uh, that you can see there uh, with the uh, gap in the middle um, that's the bit clip that needs to come off the top so the bottom of the screen needs to be pulled into the stand um, and then that exposes the little uh, bit where you can just put your fingers in to pull it off um, and then that just lifts away then you can see the four screws that uh, you need to unscrew uh, to remove the stand from the actual uh, screen itself the computer itself and best off lining it down on a towel um, and just remove the screws you can see here I've just uh, placed it onto a towel just not just to protect the screen while it's um, while you're putting pressure on the screws to undo it the, from the actual uh, base itself. So the video has just been speeded up here just to, to make things go along a bit quicker. So once you've got the four screws off, uh, the uh, just using a the magnet there just to get the screws out so I don't drop them in. Uh, but once you've got the four screws off, you can then remove the stand uh, from the uh, screen itself. It just comes away, uh, just put it at an angle. There's two tabs on there that keep it in. Once it's away, you then get access to the um, to pull the cowling off the back of the actual screen itself. So if you're, you uh, haven't done already, there's um, this particular computer has a little USB um, dongle for the keyboard and mouse. So make sure you pull that off because it will just stop and it just hinder the uh, the white cover cover coming off the um, screen itself. So I'll just pull that to one side. Obviously, need to make sure that goes back in when you're rebuilding it for your customer or for yourself. So, remove the white plastic protective case. There is two screws on the bottom. Now, these aren't secured into anything. These screws are there purely to help you start uh, the removal process. So, as you slightly turn it, you're not trying to turn it all the way. You just turn it to. Uh, you'll hear the actual uh, tabs pop as you turn them. Uh, turn the screws slightly. And it just lifts it uh, off away from the screen and stops you having to pry around in the screen. So you see there it's, uh, it's clicked it off and now I can get my pry tool in. At uh, this particular case it comes uh, open quite easily. Um, so you'll, you'll notice when you do turn those screws uh, that the, it starts to move uh, and exposes this back edge so you can get your pry tool in. And then if it, yours has just been a bit stubborn you just may have to work around a bit. As you can see we're doing here uh, just to get this the, the bottom of the uh, case loose and start moving. You see there as I'm in the plastic pry tool in, you'll hear the, the tabs just pop open slightly as you get there. And once you get it so far, um, you don't actually have to work around the front. You can just um, get in a position where you can get your, uh, lift it from the bottom. And then you'll see now as I lift the screen away, uh, the sorry, the protective white cover away from the screen, uh, it does just lift. Uh, you're not trying to lift it straight up, just at an angle so the from clips come away easily. Well, once you've got it um, lifted, don't just pull, go pulling it up because there is a cable in there that attaches the uh, DVD drive, which you can see here. It's just uh, attached from Tom tabs, so just undo the cable, and then once you get it to that position, undo the um, connector from the back of the DVD drive, and that's it. That's um, you can get the white uh, cover plate out of the way. So now we uh, can get to the insides, uh, and you can see there the. Um, there's a plate there that holds the actual um, stand on and the cable there that I've unclipped. This is the one that comes with the DVD. Uh, and at the bottom corner here is the uh, power switch. Now this is the particular machine, this is where our fault was, that white cable that you can see uh, coming out the power switch. The power switch seemed okay but this cable that goes around here uh, goes around the back of the actual speaker and then goes into the main overboard. Uh, underneath this uh, plate we're going to take off in a second um, that cable was bent quite harshly with 90 degrees but this plate here I'm pointing to uh, this is the one that holds the stand but it also the one that, where the motherboard sits underneath these four screws here are what your stand screws in uh, so although we're going to take this off we need to make sure it goes on properly uh, so it doesn't cause any problems uh, once we screw the stand back on but yeah getting back to this um, this cable it, the bend was uh, really tight um, it looked like it was putting pressure on the actual cable itself now it's possible it was damaged but they're a bit hard to get uh, come by a few to for sale on ebay and stuff but we basically took it 90 degrees out and put a, an easier bend in it 
uh, and it seemed to work. Um, the customer is aware that that's the repair we've done. So anyway, uh, this plate here, if you want to change the memory, uh, there's memory underneath there, and this is the hard drive. Uh, we're not going to show you how to remove the hard drive, but there is a couple of screws holding it on each side. You see there, uh, four screws, and there's also this clip here, which shows you the, that you can pull it in the direction. It's quite self-explanatory. The main one is uh, taking this um, the main plate off, which there's five screws on it. Um, there's one here uh, to remove. Uh, this one here, just near the uh, HDMI uh, USBs. And there's another one in the bottom left-hand corner there, which we'll just skip by. There's this one here in the top left. Um, this one here needs to come out as well. And, and obviously these need re removing uh, before we just try and take the plate away. Uh, they are quite easy to get to. You see that, oh, that's the last one I missed there, but they are quite easy to get to. It's just a Phillips screwdriver. Yeah, or, and just um, take them out, make sure you don't drop them in. Uh, but again, just use a magnet somewhere to pick them up if you haven't got a magnetic drive. Uh, just speed it up. Um, these, let me unscrewing these screws. Using a magnet again just to pick the screws up. Uh, once you've got them out of the way, we then need to remove this um, plate. And you can see from this view here, there's some tabs that these uh, that it's tucked underneath. Um, so you just need to pull it at a slight angle once you start to remove. You see these tabs here, um, so they're just hooked underneath. So once we start to take off, you just need to come off, pull from this side, lift it up slightly an angle, and it'll start to slide away. Uh, make sure you pull it up straight up and don't catch anything on the board. Uh, and there it exposes the um, bits and pieces of the main board itself. See there the processor in the middle. Here's a RAM. So if you're upgrading your RAM, I want to check it, that's it just comes out as normal. Um, there's the uh, CMOS battery, uh, again, if you want to change that, it just pops out quite easily. So again, I'm just showing you there the cable that connects to the motherboard, that that's the bit that we actually worked on. Um, so once you've done what you've done, or change your RAM, or doing whatever you wanted to do, uh, you then reassemble. So everything can reverse, but uh, make sure that when you put this in, these three little tabs there that rest uh, once you've took the tag uh, metal tabs under, it uh, stops it vibrating, just insulates it slightly. Uh, and also, once it goes in, the screws have a little recess that they sit in, so make sure they go in properly. Otherwise, uh, once you reattach the stand, it might just uh, wobble a bit because the actual four screws do attach to this plate. So you need to make sure these are reasonably tight, not too tight, obviously, not to damage anything, but make sure that they are secured and in position. They do have some... Uh, some screws, some uh, stiff screws uh, lock tight on it, um, on the screws just to stop them vibrating loose. So if you haven't got any, just make sure you you, um, you do nip them up uh, sufficiently. So once all five screws are in, just give them that final check, make sure everything's okay. So once you're happy that the screws are in tight, And you've checked everything um, then it is time to put the um, top case back on so make sure that you reattach the DVD cable which is the only cable that needs reattaching but make sure that goes in and the wire just tucks into the little plastic tags that are uh, that the cables designed for just keeps it out of the way stops it flapping around inside and um, once that's um, tucked in you then need to start just by hooking the front of the white cowl underneath the uh, screen clips, you can see they're just lining the uh, the top of the actual screen up. It needs to just sit at a slight angle just while you're lining, um, bringing it back in. Once you get it in some sort of position, you feel them going. So there you can feel I felt a click going there, and you just run your hand along the top so it clicks, and you'll hear them click. And once that's clicked in, you can then just work your way around this screen, just putting pressure around the edge just to make sure that everything's in place. You'll see if you look, um, you'll be able to see a gap. So for example, there's a gap here uh, that just needs um, clicking together and it is just a case of just working yourself around the screen. You see it click in there all the way around um, and just flip the screen around gently as you're going around um, clicking the white cowl to the main body of the screen. Uh, it is quite easy. There's no, there should be no pressure. If it feels like the pressure or, or the gap's not closing, you've possibly got something stuck. Um, it's not um, that easy to break the clips on this, so it, like I said, just be careful when you're putting it back in, make sure you've got nothing trapped. 
Uh, once you're back here, everything's clicked in, you're happy that it's on. Time for the stand to go back on. And these two tabs that are on the actual stand hook into the um, main body. So these two tags, make sure that they hook in slight, slight angle, they so holding it at an angle. Offer it onto there. And then just lay it down flat, should hold itself. You've got the tags in right. And then once you've got the tags in and you're happy with that, yeah, it's time then to just put your four screws uh, to keep this stand attached to the body. Again, just speed it up here just to keep this video uh, as short as possible. Um, this particular machine was brought in with um, the front light was going into standby um, and then wouldn't switch on at all. So that's why we opened it up and went to the cable which I pointed out earlier. So if you've got the same fault, it might worth just checking the power switch and the cable that's attached to it. Okay, so last final bit is the uh, cover plate for the screws. Again, it just put it back on the orientation. It can only go on one way. Just make sure your uh, the tabs are lined up, and it pushes towards the uh, pull it towards the base. You can see there, I just didn't have the uh, stand at the push right into the screen. So I pushed it right in the screen, offered it back in, and it should just click into place once it's. Um, once it's in the right uh, position.